That was about a 30 minute drive. We're on the outskirts of Chengdu. And this is a really old school restaurant that they were telling me about that. It's a restaurant, but then it kind of sprawls out onto the sidewalk, down the alley, down the lane. Uh, you don't know exactly. There is no menu. They just cook whatever they want to cook. And now we're starting to get into the tables. People just chowing down for lunch. Wow. This restaurant. Like, this, wow. This, this, this. It just like goes. Like it's like a four way fork in the road with just 360 restaurant. You just turn around and there's tables everywhere. There's a lot of happy people eating a lot of delicious looking food that I can't wait to try. Whoa. So one of the things that we have to get is the cold chicken mixed with chili oil. So you come over here, it's almost like food court style because you, you go to different stations, you pick up what you want to eat, it's all self-service. You grab and go and go to your table, but here you order it. This is the cold mix station cart. Um, so you order here and he mixes it up fresh for you before you take it to your table to chow down. out of control. It's just like a table just packed full of food, like all sorts of different dishes. You can smell the aromas of the chilies and the citron pepper and like the sweet aromatics. Um, and these are, yeah, just all cooked, all plated. You pick up what you want to eat, you bring it to your table. It's lively, it's energetic. And uh, cool. <laughs> This is like the, this is a deep fried, deboned uh, palms of the chicken foot, if you nice. will. I don't know if we need that one if you, if you want, but. I want to see him just mixing up that chicken, other than that. Yeah, they got uh, this, the cold mix station there is like continually okay. going, so. Even after eating possibly seven breakfasts, I've never been excited for another meal like this ever the action that thank you the action the energy just the vibrancy of this place it really is like a community center because people probably just come from the surrounding area they come here they congregate here food is always about people and so you sit at a round table you have the food you converse you hang out you socialize you eat surrounded by the best food and that's what we're about to do okay, i'm going to start with the cold chicken which is is it boiled or steamed uh, it's a poached chicken. So poached chicken. It's boiled. Okay, so it's boiled, and then they it, it's chopped up into bite-sized pieces. Then he actually like when you order it, he tosses it with the chili oil, with the peanuts, with the uh, green onions. Well, yes. There's so much flavor in that oil. Like it's it's so nutty from the sesame seeds, but infused with the chili nuttiness of it again, and just the texture of the chicken actually because it's poached. It's like. Oh, and a little zing to the tongue for sure. Mm. It's sort of a subtle sauce too. It's actually like, it's not as spicy as it looks. There's a little mm. bit of soy sauce and there's mm -hmm. vinegar and a little bit of sugar and ginger and garlic and stuff. But it's like, and he takes all supposed to be like quite a, quite a balance. It's a good measure of like a chef's like, skill. Look at this dish. It is very well rounded because it's even a little slightly sweet. I like bring everything together. Yeah, it's a, it's a circular flavor in your mouth all at once. I'm gonna try the fish neck, which is a freshwater fish, and I think all that sauce, a lot of that sauce is the fermented bean, bean sauce, bean, 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 those beans, the the oil again, the onions in there, the chill, the the garlic and the ginger comes in really nicely. Okay, we also got a, a vegetable dish to balance out the saucy meatinesses dishes. Uh, this one is bitter melon, and I think there's some peppers in there fried as well. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful! But I love bitter melon. The complexity of the bitterness, the the wok smokiness and that's just like salty delicious okay and next up for the mixture of kidneys and liver then stir fried down with some chilies there's some pickled, pickled um, chilies pickled chilies nice wood ear fungus, wood ear fungus. awesome oh. 
I got a bite of the kidney. That texture, yes. It's wonderful. I mean, it's not, it's delicious. I mean, it's just slightly irony, but just like, it's just pure. It's just delicious. It's really soft and tender is what it is. Again, the kidney is so soft and tender. Like, it just almost does dissolve in your mouth. Yeah, so good with the pickled chilies. I think we got an amazing mixture of different dishes with so many different flavors and all different flavors. Oh, we always do them, but the end of Okay, all the food is good, but I think my favorite is that cold chicken, which is one of their specialties here. That sauce is just like, oh, wow. It's just blowing my taste buds. The citrusiness of the Sichuan pepper, that chili oil is so unbelievably fragrant. And then just, yeah, again, that nuttiness with the sesame seeds with the crunch of the chili as well. I'm gonna try to scoop on some of these big green onion stalks and some of that oil and some of those peanuts onto the rice, the chicken, and just look at the thickness and flavor of that sauce. Wow. Like this. It's so much flavor. It just absorbs into that green onion stock with the chicken. The chicken texture is also just beautiful. As you tell, you can tell that's not a hormoned up chicken. That's a straight natural running around bird that just, it's one of those, as you chew, the flavor just keeps on releasing along with that sauce. And as soon as you get up from your table, they clear your plates, they clear your dishes, and they even, because this restaurant is so punctual, so timely, they even like stack your chairs. As soon as you step up, there's still a few tables, but for the most part, people eat, people leave, people go about their business for the day. However, there are a lot of Chandu tea shops where people are just hanging out, drinking tea, relaxing. Cool. <laughs> Which is also a big part of Chandu culture, is the tea shop culture. That sound that Mahjong Ah, okay, so people play Mahjong as well. It's such a cool environment, kind of like makeshift. Those are like serious tables though, they almost look like air hockey tables. People take the time here to socialize, to relax, to just hang out with friends, play games and eat. And I think that's what really speaks boldly and strongly about Sichuan Chandu culture. So we're on our way to the next place to eat, which is the chicken spot kind of in the, we got off the main road, we went down a side road, and now we're going off onto a dirt road, bumpy dirt road. This is a great spot. Surrounded by trees and greenery and farm, but in the middle of Chandu, there's some friendly dogs wandering around, there's fruit trees blooming, and this is the site, the beautiful site of where we're gonna eat, I believe a chicken dish. We're just walking around above the farm of the restaurant and we found here's a Sichuan peppercorn tree. It's just fully blooming, the red Sichuan peppercorns. Yeah, oh, I gotta dude. taste it too, right off the tree. Get oh some. man. Yeah. Wow. It's like taking a bite out of an apple, but a Sichuan pepper. It's actually a tree, yeah. It's not a bush, it's a tree. Mm. Oh, it's like eating fruit. It is a berry. And that's not, yeah, it's not nearly as intense as the, the ones we ate at the market. That's like mild. You could just like snack on it all day long, definitely. Mmm, delicious. Look at the size. <laughs> Look at the size of this bowl. Everything is included, but it's just like, you can smell the fragrance of the ginger coming off of that. You can see that layer of oil, the flavor, the chunks of chicken. Okay, let's go for it. It's a family-sized bowl. It's, it's the entire chicken, so you might get a, a breast, you might get a thigh, you might get the foot, you might get a nail, you might get the rooster comb, but it, yeah, it's like a, it almost looks like it's just been braised within that oil, within that flavor. You see some Sichuan peppercorns floating around. It's so gingery fragrant. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> that is so good. Mm. Again, like the texture of the chicken, but it's like so, it's a little bit muscular, but like soft at the same time. The ginger is just infused into that oil and it's just like spicy. It's not really spicy, but it's just like so warming and comforting. This is definitely a dish that would be really good when it's cold because you can almost like, even with the first bite, kind of feel the warmth just like overwhelming you. That's extraordinary though. That is delicious. Is it like two roosters? Do we have? Okay, that is a. Because they got a full grown rooster, so he's some seven, eight pound bird. Um, <laughs> seven, eight pounds of rooster <laughs> in one bowl. There's a big with like bird in there. At least like. Excluding the like, organs and blood. <laughs> and just like liters of oily sauce. And it is so unbelievably tasty. In this environment, this atmosphere in the countryside in the middle of Chengdu also makes it. Mm. And if you like dig deep down, like it's so hot. Yeah, the oil just like retains its heat. Um, it's just warm and cozy down there. You almost have to inhale air as you take a bite so that cools off a little bit. Mm. Okay, and also additionally with the the massive pan of rooster. The organs are chopped up separately and then uh, mixed with celery as well as some of the pickled chilies. Um, and so that's uh, another side dish that you eat. Wow. Oh, the celery, it just is like perfect crunch, but it's not like stringy. Um, and then the organs just kind of like dissolve in your mouth. Because I got a piece of liver on that bite. I'll report them to about oh, this place. <laughs> like, nah, don't do it, buddy. Mm. What I especially like about this sauce, about this oil, is that it's infused with ginger, but it also has a little bit of a, a sourish tanginess to it. Um, wow. It's just so much condensed flavor, just reduced down into that oily pool of rooster. We're gonna share the rejuice them. <laughs> We're gonna share the kidneys, the rooster kidneys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had a rooster kidney before. Mm. Oh, it's so soft. I like the texture. Yeah. It's With just this like skin, very soft. Okay, now we're gonna dig into the <laughs> the rooster head comb. Oh yeah, it's very jellyish. Regal. It's still connected to the head. Wow, yeah, it's just like straight up like like such tender fat not even cartilage. It's just straight Fat is what it is. It's just been cooked for so long That is just gelatinized Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it's testing my chopstick ability. It weighs like a pound. Yeah, man. it's heavy. That head is a regal. Look at the size of that crown. It is heavy. Mm. Oh, yeah <laughs> It's good. It's so it's so good <laughs> No, it's really, it's like a jelly bean. It's like yeah, soft it's and gelatinous. And... That was a huge rooster. Oh, as we were as we we're leaving, they asked the owner how big our rooster was. We had the whole rooster. That rooster was a four and a half kilo. I think that's like over 10 pounds of rooster in one single braised oil bowl. That was delicious. This is an amazing place. I love how it's just like in the middle of Chengdu, but you feel like you're in the countryside. Oh, this has been a lot of food, so many flavors, so many ingredients, such a diversity of different dishes on this ultimate Chengdu Sichuan Chinese street food tour so far. And we still have quite a lot of food to eat. So keep on watching. There's going to be a lot more food that we're going to share with you.
So we have a little bit of time this afternoon to relax, to walk around before the next meal opens up this evening. Uh, and so we stopped by People's Park, which is one of the central parks in Chengdu. But again, it's such a lush, such a like tropical feeling park. It's so beautiful. It's so many plants and trees. And uh, People's Park is known for their tea houses. Well, all over Chengdu, as we already saw earlier. Uh, so we're, we've come into this really lush garden tea house. We're gonna have some tea here and we're gonna try to ease our stomachs into digestion before the next food. <laughs> and it's also very cool to see this side of the Chandu culture because it is such a chill, such a, I probably said this a couple times, like a socializing, relaxed culture. This is a perfect place to be drinking tea. I got the green tea um, served in like the three piece. It's the tray, the cup, and the cover lid so you can keep it hot and also brew it. And then you get unlimited hot water so you can keep filling up, keep pouring up. <sighs> yeah, this is a perfect tea drinking spot by the Lotus Pond, just surrounding the Lotus Pond, covered by trees and umbrellas. I love this part of Chengdu as well. This culture of Chandu. We are going to eat something called juan juan, which is kind of like a hot pot, but you don't boil it yourself on your table. Instead, you choose skewers, and then you, they cook them in the back, they boil them in the hot oil soup, um, and then they bring them back to your table, and then you use dip, and you sauce them yourself. Um, and so, this is very common in Chandu. Do you say juan juan? Chuan chuan. Chuan chuan. Okay, and so that's what we're gonna eat next. You choose your own skewers. This place is already busy and buzzing, and it's like a whole party going, on now. party is going on right there, and it's a very popular part of the culture in Chengdu. These rabbit kidneys, yep. Looks like gizzard, maybe. The roof of the pig's mouth. Okay, so to the right-hand side are all of the vegetables, like at least a dozen different types of vegetables and roots. Um, and then to the left-hand side, in the fridges, are all the meat parts, a lot of rabbit, pig varieties, and then they're pretty small skewers, just like kind of like single bite skewers, right? Yeah. Um, Chicken hearts. So you just grab whatever you want, as much as you want, on a tray. Beef and chicken gizzards. Nice. Man, the amount of skewers here and just like, because it's just like a single bite, they must just have like an army of people like putting these on skewers and just how many masses they sell per night too. But as you could just go through the skewers. Is it okay? Oh, nice. <laughs> In the back of the kitchen here, they have these massive like barrels of the chili juicy soup, which they, and you can smell the aroma of it, it smells so good. What they do is they take all their skewers, he divides them into the meat and the vegetables so that he separates them out depending on how long they cook. Um, then he like takes that entire skewer, it almost is like a broom because of, like a, like a broom because of all those different skewers and how thin they are. He wraps them in the, in the soup, he twists them in the soup, he ties them up with a rubber band to keep them in and then like dunks them in. And that smells incredible. <laughs> <laughs> cool back there. And one of the things that's awesome is that they, um, how they keep track of everybody's orders. Cool. Because there's like so many skewers and there's so many orders and they, they just keep track of the orders even though they, they keep on just skewer after skewer. Well, they're still cooking the skewers. Uh, we got some pre-snacks which are duck tongues as well as rabbit heads. Rabbit heads are extremely popular as a snack. Um, 
Nothing. Let's have the rabbit head first. Appetizer. The rabbit head, but we can like do some ways to get more out of it. Okay, so what you do before you eat a rabbit head, you're provided a, a baggie of gloves. Oh, and here comes the chun chun. Nice. Gloves go on. The correct way to eat a rabbit head? Well, there's no real correct way. Like, you can do whatever you want, but... You have to, yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna pull the top and bottom jaw apart like that. Tear the bottom jaw off. Mine broke a bit, but... Cheeks first? So it's like that whole like chicken foot thing, it's like activity eating, but a rabbit head actually has a lot of meat on it too. So what you do first is you just, yeah, you pull apart the bottom and top jaw. You can see the tongue right there. And then you go tongue first? Cheeks. No, cheeks first. Which is, oh, and it's on the bottom section? Is that the cheek meat right there? Yeah. That one there? Okay. First. Wow. Oh, the cheek is incredible. It's like really, really dark poultry, but even better tasting than that. And because it's soaked in that, they're just boiled and then soaked in the, and then fried and then soaked in the like Sichuan pepper infused oil. Wow. Oh, wow, it's tasty. Okay, and then and now it's tongue time. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. Okay, and then... Oh yeah. Oh man, the eyeball. Eyeball is incredible. Like it's so... It's so tender actually. Like there's all that jelly material. This is perfect, yeah. This one is really good, yeah? Yeah, yeah, the... The maize, the tingling sensation from the Sichuan pepper corn. This is good, like, it's at a really good level. Like not too strong, but like very nice and tingly. Like you know... You know your mouth is buzzing. And then you open up the, for the brain section. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, the brain is so good. It's so incredibly creamy. And when I, when I slurped like that whole chunk of brain just kind of like popped out into my mouth with creaminess. Wow. This is just a sensationally tasty rabbit head. I like how oily your camera is. Oh yeah. Oh man, there's like food within this camera. Okay, next up for the duck tongues. And it's actually like the whole like bottom section with the tongue with the like structure. Mm. And again, this is a very textural thing. You can, it's like jelly-ish. Again, it has that wonderful like Sichuan pepper zing to it. Plus the like smokiness to it. And then it's very, a little bit jelly-ish and a little bit cartilage -y. Okay, so time for the skewers. And again, they're like little small skewers. You can just kind of, you just kind of pick out your skewers you want or any, any order. Slide it off into the Oh, you slide it off, okay. Slide it off into the At the end, you just count the sticks. And there's also two different sauces. One of them is uh, like a dry sauce with chili and peanuts. The other is more of a soupy sauce with oil and sesame oil. Sesame oil like and garlic and, and, and pure garlic. oil, okay. no soup. Okay. I'm gonna try the, the dry sauce first and drop them in. And then just kind of like scoop up some of that chili. Mm. Oh, wow, like it's like, I mean they're, they're boiled in that sauce at first. And then you, so that gives them flavor that cooks them. So they absorb that flavor. Next up this is like a, a piece of tripe I believe. Mm. And that's a wonderful texture too, like it's not too chewy. It chews pretty easily, maybe because it's been cooked for so long. Um, it's just like so tasty, and I love how they're, the skewers are so small. So you have to keep on doing something, kind of like a hot pot, like keep dipping a bite. But here it's just keep taking a skewer. Okay, next up is the rabbit kidney, which I'm gonna dunk into the sesame oil sauce. And rabbit kidneys seems like one of the premium bite at the at Chuan Chuan. Oh yeah, I think it's a three sticker. Yeah, it was a three stick. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So like, you could eat one skewer of like the little meat or the tofu or the vegetable. One bite of rabbit kidney is three skewers. It's soft. It's crumbly. It's delicious. Oh, the pumpkin is good. Yeah, the pumpkin is really good. Wow, like, I'm impressed how good that pumpkin is because it's all, it melts in your mouth. 
And again, pumpkin has the ability to just absorb that, that sauce, and that's what it's all about. Chuan Chuan is all about layer upon layer of spice and Sichuan pepper. I love it. Again, another common thing to eat here along with the uh, Chuan Chuan and the skewers is uh, sweet potato noodles. And you even dip that so it's like sauce and juice on top of sauce and juice. Just layer upon layer, and you hope as much like stays on your thing that you're eating as possible. Mmm, a really chewy texture, but kind of gummy at the same time. And then, yeah, with that vinegar added to the sauce, the sesame oil, it's awesome. The way they, I mean, the way they make your bill, tally up your bill, and charge you is they count the different skewers, the amount of skewers. Uh, sometimes I think they weigh the skewers as well if you eat a giant amount, but we didn't eat too many. Uh, so she counted the skewers, and that's like enough to make a, a grass broom worth, um, and then you're charged by the skewer. The next place now, I mean, we're going to a place to eat crawfish or crawdads. Um, and this is another bumping place. It's busy, it's energetic, the tables are full. This might be a series of restaurants, I think. Um, and then all the seating is just spread out kind of within this lane, within this alley of all the different restaurants. He's hanging out with the family that runs this restaurant. I think he's the uncle. He's the uncle. <laughs> the crawfish have just arrived. That's beautiful. Again, okay, another dish that we got along with the crawfish are pig brains, which are, yeah, you can smell the Sichuan pepper coming off of them. We've had quite a quite a quite a quantity of oil today. <laughs> As you can see, the Sichuan peppercorns in here, and I'm gonna grab a. Oh man, it's just loaded with Sichuan peppercorns, though. Look at all that. Oh, it's hot down there too. And so you can kind of pluck off the body and then like just kind of like crunch the body and then you can kind of peel that down. Mm. Again, this is just like a, a food you want to suck, you want to lick, you want to get into. And like Sichuan food is like the, the perfect like sauce sucking mouth numbing just like flavor coating on your tongue that is possible good church one too flavor mm. yeah it's so incredibly tasty well we say fatty but not greasy right fatty but not greasy. <laughs> they are bunny. are these fatty but not greasy <laughs> they are bunny. <laughs> okay and then next up for the other dish which is the pig brains Wow, it's just like melted mozzarella swimming in chili oil and Sichuan pepper oh, just dissolving. Oh wow, it's so rich, it's so creamy, unbelievably tasty, incredible. Yeah, it's like the meat sweats, the everything it's like, sweats. It's like whipped butter or something, it's like so <laughs> fluffy. Every try to make the, the meal last. Yeah, you did. I did it. Yeah. Okay. You do want to wear gloves here, or you'll have like, you may have oil on your fingers till tomorrow, and I'm okay with that though. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's about the same. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Repurposed water bottles got like yes. 15 different spices, and I got all these yes. homemade hot sauces. Okay, the crayfish were wonderful, uh, but we have one more restaurant that we're gonna. And this is gonna wrap up this entire Chinese Sichuan street food tour. Uh, we're at a barbecue slash stir fry restaurant. And his stir frying is just so cool. First of all, his setup, he has this big fire going and he has this like pizza pan tray that's like warped. And so as he stirs, it just kind of like wobbles up and down. Then it's just like an, a, a, just an incredible assortment of everything from lotus 
lotus pods to hot dogs, which he just kind of, I think he's just totally freestyling, just tossing in whatever sauce selection he likes, <laughs> um, whatever he feels like, and just like wobbles that on the pizza pan over the fire until it's ready, like a slow stir fry, and then puts it on a plate. Man, this guy is a, he's a genius. The barbecue frog has arrived and they've kind of like, I mean, they've kind of shriveled up a little bit because the juices have dried and like they've been fully grilled. We also got this little roll up with bean curd stuffed with fish mint. It's called fish mint. And then it looks like over everything, they just kind of like drench it with raw garlic and chilies. Like a wonderful night snack. Fish. All right, I'll start with that hind leg. Good drone stick. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. The peanuts, the cumin, the chilies, the garlic, and just a variety of different rubs and spices that have just caramelized onto the frog. And that's incredibly delicious. It's like, the frog is very tender. And what I love about frog is like the leanness of the meat. It's so lean. It's so like, so much pure meat on there. And these are like little, little nuggets of meat just kind of flake off. Mm. Yeah, that is an incredibly tasty frog. They're definitely brushing some oils on it too to like keep it hydrated as it's on the grill. Mm. It's so meaty too. Like a lot of meat, a lot of meat. I mean, there's on bones, there. but it's really like solid meat on this frog. Okay, and then the final thing is this tofu bean curd roll up stuffed with fish mint topped with chilies and garlic. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mm hmm. That's a lot of fish mint in one bite. Okay. Like before you even, like, it fully goes in your mouth. And fish mint is one of those kind of strange things because some people can taste different flavors. Some people don't taste anything at all. Some people taste fishiness. I definitely taste the fishiness of it. Minty, yeah, minty, but also like a an off mint. A different kind of mint. I think it's pretty good. Um, but it is unique, that's for sure. <laughs> that, I mean, wow, wow. Literally, as I was on my last, bite. we thought it was uh, the last bite of this ultimate Chengdu street food tour. <laughs> Uncle, he's so cool. And uh, again, like we didn't order this dish, he just gave it to us. He comes, we're I'm taking my last bite, and he drops it off at our table. This entire fry pan, the pizza pan, the wobbly pizza pan, slow fry of I think it's mostly frog and fish mint and onions and all the random toppings that he throws in there and he gave it to us for free. Especially since it's at the final end of the day. We thought we were on the home stretch and this is like this is like a meal for ten <laughs> at the end of all of today. But that's the ultimate gesture of the hospitality. Uncle's so cool. He is an amazing man. <laughs> okay. We have we have twelve more portions of food to eat. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. Sichuan mm. peppercorn. What a dish. On the vine. Mm. What a dish to end this food tour. Like that's just a, a pile of chopped up frog, onions, chilies, Sichuan pepper, and his like random freestyle stir fry sauce mixture. I'm not even like talking fully. I'm like you're speaking word by word. <laughs> the peppercorns get you, man. The whole day of it. The whole day of food is getting to me. No. <laughs> okay. And I am back to the same exact place where I started this video, introduced this video. We began this ultimate Sichuan Chinese street food tour of Chengdu early this morning. That was back at 8 a.m. It's now 10 past 10 p.m. It's been a full solid 14 hours of eating straight 
nonstop. I want to say a massive thank you to uh, Jordan and Anita from Chandu Food Tours. They run food tours in Chandu. Um, I love their passion for Chandu and for Sichuan food and their knowledge. Um, and so I'll have their link in the description box below. <sighs> what a day. I'm just blown away by the Sichuan peppers, by all the ingredients. I'm just happy. All I can say is I'm happy. Uh, please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe now. Click the little bell icon. That way you'll get notified of the next video that I publish. Good night from Chandu, and I will see you on the next video.